so glad you got that on camera. <laughs> Hello and welcome to today's episode. This morning I've got the car trailer hooked up to the trusty Hilux. We're heading out, we're gonna go pick up a new project car. For those of you that know myself uh, reasonably personally, you'll probably have seen this coming for a long time. I don't think it's gonna really surprise that many people out there what car we're gonna go pick up. But uh, I'm pretty excited. It's a street car rather than a drift car this time around. And uh, it's a pretty special car, not only to myself, but these cars are getting rarer and rarer, particularly in street trim. So uh, I think it's gonna be a, a pretty cool car to have around and to fix up. Is definitely gonna be a, a bit of a fixer opera, but uh, let's go jump in the car, cruise around and uh, take a look at what we're gonna be working on for at least probably the next year. So here we are, just behind the roller door is the uh, car that we're gonna be taking home. So it turns out I'm running out of time, so uh, we'll move this thing, chuck it on the trailer. Hi, hi, hi. Well, it turns out I don't have a lot of time to actually film this, and these guys keep ruining every take that I make by yelling shit in the background. So Love it. we're gonna put this thing on the trailer, and then I'll talk you guys through uh, what the deal is with it when I get it back home. Well, Mr. Skyline, probably soon to be known as Coops, welcome to your new home. Hope you like it. Well, those of you that have been watching the channel recently have probably already guessed whose car this was and why it's here at the moment. This is another one of Todd's R32s. I think he had three in the backyard. He had the missile, this, and a uh, completely bare shell. So uh, this is a clean street car. 
It was his daily for quite a, a number of years. Uh, unfortunately, he did have some issues with the engine and some uh, rear quarter damage because somebody hit him when the car was parked. So he did stop dailying it probably about a year and a half ago. And uh, that's why it's got so much uh, dust and dirt all over it. It was sitting under a, a carport for that time. So what we've done is uh, I've purchased half of this car from his estate and another one of his very close mates has purchased the other half. The idea is we want to have this as sort of a rolling memorial to him, something that we can look at, it reminds us of him, and also we can go for a cruise and uh, still sort of feel his presence there because we associate uh, R32 so closely to him. It's hard not to look at uh, one of these without thinking of him. So that's the idea behind the car. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done to it though. It's, it's pretty good base, if I'm honest. It's, it's pretty clean. But there is lots of little things that need doing, as well as the engine and the uh, the rear quarter issues. So, like this is held in by duct tape. There's interior trim missing. Obviously, it needs a clean, and uh, there's some paint peeling and stuff like that. So, lots to get done before it gets back out on the street. But I'm pretty excited to see this thing back out there. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, go grab the GoPro, show you guys in a bit more detail. So let's do a quick walk around of the car here. This is probably the most pressing issue on the car, I would say. This is where it got hit when it was in a car park. Somebody drove into it with a truck and just managed to uh, clip the rear quarter here. We'll have to uh, pay to get this thing fixed up. Obviously the rear bumper, the rear tail light shroud, and this giant hole. So this car's probably gonna have to go off to Born Again Restorations to get work done to it for that because uh, there's that and uh, a few other body issues that need to be attended to. Namely, if you come up here, it's got uh, rust bubbling through from the window, from the guard, just above this fuel flap, and this window, as well as a couple little spots on the other side. So that's the first thing that I've sort of noted about the car that needs some work is the, uh, the rust repairs. The rear of the car's not too bad. It's uh, got pods on it on the rear, and also it's got side skirts, which look pretty good. Again, I have no idea if that's actually uh, factory or not, but uh, let me know in the comments if you're a GTR or Skyline expert. You can probably tell me if they're factory or not. The side skirts don't really look like they're held on in a factory way, so that could, uh, that could be the case. Anyway, coming along the side here, he had this thing slammed, considering he's got Tickford wheels on it. He did love the Tickford wheels. He, uh, he had them on all his cars. He's quite a fan of them. Uh, the paint... It's not amazing, it's clear coat is missing in a, quite a few spots, so at some point it might need a respray, but I think that's a, a long way down the road sort of thing. Uh, coming up to the front, so it's RB20 Turbo, it's got front mount intercooler, Spitfire coil packs and a pod filter, otherwise it's stock standard. And uh, I know that this thing has some issues when it starts up, it sort of misses for a little while before it gets going. And it doesn't really rev cleanly, so we're going to have to figure out that. Also, and probably the most important with the engine, it's drinking water. I know that Todd stopped driving it because he suspected it had head gasket issues. So at some point, we're gonna to have to figure out where that water's going and what the go is. Uh, coming around the side here, this blinker is held on with duct tape because all of the, uh, the plastic hold down parts and bolt holes are broken off. So we're gonna to need to attend to that. Probably should show you the interior too, I guess. Both these windows work, which is nice. So I gotta say, I quite like this wheel. I think we'll probably get that retrimmed at some point. That style of wheel's pretty cool. I wouldn't want to replace that with something that wasn't standard. It does need a, a bit of a vacuum and that sort of thing. Some trim pieces replaced, like the one for the ECU down there. And probably these two back here for the rear quarter window. But overall, it's pretty clean and uh, we'll probably fix that up over time. Hopefully we can still source some of these parts new, but Nissan uh, don't really like to do too much of that. I'll, other than the heritage program, which costs a small fortune. So that is uh, pretty much the car. So we're gonna have a few episodes on this coming up sometime in the future. I wanna get this thing back on the road by the end of the year. I'm hoping that it's uh, gonna be able to go on historic rego. It's a 1992 model, but it was compiled in 2000. And for whatever reason, the government think that it is a 2000 model. So 
we're going to have to attend to that. It's probably going to need an ID inspection. Problem is, obviously, at the moment, if we get an ID inspection, they'll want a full inspection on the car because there's a few glaring issues going on with things like ride height and holes in panels. So what we're going to do is probably fix the car up enough that it can go through ID inspection without being uh, pulled over the full pits. Then we can get it on historic rego and go cruising for summer. So that's the general plan of the car. We'll see if it works out, but uh, yeah, that's going to be coming up in the, uh, the future episodes this year. Uh, thanks for watching this episode. Like, subscribe, share, that sort of thing. Or don't if you don't want to, that's fine too. And uh, see you on the next episode.